Welcome to Bold Blind Beauty and Beyond Sight Magazine, an online community where real beauty transcends barriers. And our Women on the Move segments focus on monthly profiles of inspirational women, their capabilities, achievements, and their journeys as they navigate through the course of sight loss and blindness. I'm your host, Nazreen. And for our July 2020 segment of Women on the Move, our featured guest is the lovely diva herself, Miss Takisha Seffold. Hi, Takisha. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Living life to its fullest. That's her mantra. And she's a former contestant of the Miss Blind Diva Empowerment Pageant. She's a disability advocate, role model and mentor, and a captain of the Braille Bandits, just to name a few of her extraordinary things she has done thus far. And also, she was our monthly beauty for the month of May. So let's all give a warm welcome to Keisha. Hello. I'm so excited to be with you all this afternoon. Can you please tell us a little bit about your background? Well, um, I was born and raised in Palm Beach County, Florida. Um, I reside currently in Riviera Beach, and I was born to a pretty large family. My um, grandmother had eight kids. My father is the seventh out of eight kids. Um, I'm the oldest. I have a younger sister and I have four brothers. I went to um, local schools here in Riviera Beach and I graduated from Sun Coast Community High School and worked in various jobs. Uh, later on in life, at the age of 26, I became visually impaired from retina detachment. And so from there, I had to be rehabilitated, um, learning various things to make me as independent as I am now. I joined the National Federation of the Blind, which I joined the local chapter here in Palm Beach County. And I immediately was voted in on the board. I um, became treasurer. Um, the following year, and I have served as president for the National Federation of the Blind of Palm Beach over the last six years. Also, during that time, I attended Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, Florida, where I majored in social work. And I'm involved in so many different things. I consider myself a consumer advocate for the disabled community, which I have served as the liaison for our disabled community in the city of Riviera Beach. And so um, since and throughout my journey, I've had very ex experience of traveling various places and being involved in, in various things, which um, some of those things I'm quite sure I will be sharing with you all. When you, let's just go back to when you first uh, were diagnosed with, uh, I guess it's ROP at the age of 26. I mean, that's a young, age, you're just finishing high uh, college and sort of starting life really. How did that make you feel? At that age, um, 26, which was a very fun time for me, um, being sighted, I was working. I was working two jobs at the time. Um, I was living independently and I was driving. And, you know, for myself, I never thought that I would be visually impaired. So it just sort of happened out of nowhere within two weeks. Um, I was losing eyesight. And I uh, thought maybe like many others, I thought that I would re regain my sight at some point uh, because I was in denial. But it was certainly, um, it's a, a life-changing experience at that age, definitely. So you, you love to travel. What has been your favorite place to travel to thus far? Let's see. There are so many places that I have enjoyed um, visiting, but I would have to say Visiting uh, Washington, D.C. has been one of my favorite places I have visited, primarily um, for advocacy purposes uh, for the NFB Washington seminar. I've been able to attend quite a few times and I enjoy the atmosphere and the culture and things of that nature. And I have to just include one other place. I love um, New York City. <laughs> I cannot forget about New York. 
<laughs> Me too. <laughs> Any tips for uh, first time travelers? I would say, you know, to not be nervous or afraid and don't be afraid of asking, um, you know, planning and organizing it, you know, how you want to do it from step by step certainly would help the journey, um, not just sort of spontaneously getting up and traveling, but just sort of mapping things out. But confidence is key. So if you have the, the confidence, you will certainly have the ability to feel comfortable with moving around, using your cane, and just being comfortable with asking people uh, for assistance if you need to. Can you tell us a little bit about the Just Us Blind Girls Initiative? Yes. Um, I want to say in 2011, I went to a conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Miss Virginia Gray, who is the founder of Just Us Blind Girls, because it originates from out of Atlanta, Georgia. I attended a conference and then in 2012 in Palm Beach County, uh, myself, along with other women, we hosted a conference um, here as well. It sort of, I wouldn't say it died out. Um, but the participation was low. And so when I graduated um, in 2017, um, I decided, well, I was asked if I would like to carry the name in Palm Beach County and facilitate a support group for blind and visually impaired women. Um, just to discuss some of our challenges that we have, I um, also bring in guest speakers. I call them sheroes, uh, women who are heroes in our blind community and who can, who set an example and who do who are doing things in their community to make a difference but primarily it's it's a sisterhood of women where we can support one another how we can turn those challenges into actual uh things that can be celebrated first of all is that remote or is it on site and is it just in the florida area uh, well, since this pandemic, uh, we have been meeting remotely, which has been a, a benefit to our support group because we've been able to invite many other women um, from other areas. So there's no geographical restrictions. Uh, we meet every third Wednesday of the month, which I can provide the conference call number that we use, which is 253-993-36. 7-7. Seven, seven. So we invite any women, you know, any visually impaired or blind female or just any any women in general who's interested in knowing more information. Um, and we plan to have many guest speakers in the near future. You also took part in the Blind Diva Empowerment Pageant. What was that experience like for you? Well, that experience was a great experience. Um, I would have to say, first of all, um, the, when I was a, a, a contestant in the pageant, which is in 2018, um, I was the only contestant that was out of state. So it was interesting for myself flying back and forth to Newark, New Jersey, <clears throat> which I had to uh, fly for various workshops and practices that we had. So. It gave me an opportunity to, um, you know, be in a different area that I never traveled and also to meet other women and to know that there are other women who are involved and who are doing things in their community and just meeting new friends. So it was certainly a great experience. And I would encourage anyone um, to take on any type of, you know, activities or um different opportunities that we do have in our blind community throughout the country. Were you uh, crowned Miss Diva? No, I wasn't, but uh, we had to do a video that displayed our independence. Um, it was called the Miss Independent YouTube Challenge. And so I, um, I think I got about 2,100 views, but I, I was crowned Miss Independent you, for the YouTube challenge. So, <laughs> so I looked at <laughs> that as, you know, a, um, a great win. Who is your major influencer, would you say? I would have to say um, our, our former first lady, Michelle Obama. I, I think that she's certainly a, um, a very um, classy, conservative 
educated female and she certainly um, inspired me in many ways. And how do you define success and failure? Success shouldn't be measured as to, you know, how large the accomplishment is. I mean, I, I think that if I could lose a couple of pounds, that's a success for me. So, <laughs> um, so I, I would say that, you know, to um, count the small things um, and don't be so hard on yourself, just look at it as it's a learning experience and how can you um, better in that area um, and I think that failure, in my opinion, is not an option, even if it's just taking a, a couple of steps back, because sometimes in life we adjust back and forth, back and forth. But as long as you continue to have the determination um, to move forward, and that's where you're succeeding, no matter if it's just a, a small step ahead. So um, I just. I just look at, you know, those things as just having a positive, a positive attitude and outlook on uh, anything that you do in life. And what do you foresee in long-term goals? What is next for you? There's quite a few different things. Um, I, I would hope to pursue further education. I'm always looking for various employment opportunities. And I'm also in the process of writing a, a book on um, just my experience and, and different aspects of my life and, and marriage. So how can we reach you, Takesha? Well, I, I am on Facebook. My uh, Facebook name is T. Nicole Saffold, S-A-F-F-O-L-D. Um, I also have a LinkedIn profile, which is my name, Takesha Saffold. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at TK Saffold and um, also my email address, uh, which is tnsaffold82 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible and insightful journey with us. You'll be able to find Takesha's story in Beyond Sight magazine under Women on the Move for July 2020 at www.oldlinebeauty.com. Thanks for listening.